when you pluck a guitar string, there's quite a lot of math going on. The vibration pattern is governed by a partial differential equation called the wave equation. Your plucking action creates an initial shape of the string, and the fixed ends of the string create two boundary conditions. We can model the resulting behavior with finite differences if we follow five steps. First, we transform the wave equation into a difference equation using i as an index for x values and j as an index for t values. Second, we solve for f i j plus 1, the shape of the string one time step after we pluck it. This process follows the same pattern we've seen before, but we end up with a problem. To get started with j equals 1, we need the shape of the string at j equals 0 and at j equals negative 1, some mysterious time before we plucked the guitar string. Did we accidentally pluck with 1.21 gigawatts? This is a second order differential equation after all, so we need two initial conditions. In step 3, we get around this problem by bringing in the derivative of the shape function at j equals 0. In step 4, we solve for the mysterious f i negative 1. Finally, in step 5, we combine our two difference equations to arrive at f i 1. This gives us enough information to begin iterating forward in time. Notice that this process is not successive over relaxation since we're not making better guesses, but rather moving forward in time, giving us a hybrid of finite differences with the Euler-Kromer method. In this code, which is available in a link in the description below, we model a vibrating guitar string. We start with the initial shape of the guitar string and the first derivative of the shape function. In this case, we're releasing the string from rest. We need three lists to keep track of our function shape, one at the previous time step, one at the current time step, and one at the next time step. Here we use our trick with the first derivative to get around having to know the shape at a negative time value. Here we loop over time. With each time step, we need to update each point along the string using our difference equation. Then we update our lists to prepare for the next iteration. The resulting animation shows us how the string behaves, keeping the endpoints fixed. You should now be able to use the method of finite differences to solve a partial differential equation with time as an independent variable. Use the code in the link in the description below to solve these partial differential equations for the given initial conditions. 